Matthew chapter 23. Then spank Jesus to the multitude, turns to the multitude, and to his disciples. Now, the object here is going to be the Pharisees. But he, I don't want to say he turned his back on them, but he, he's got them on a corner, but he's speaking to the multitude of disciples. He's going to be speaking about them with them there. I don't know how to say it. I don't I'm not saying I'm not by any chance saying Jesus Christ is a wimp, but he's not addressing the Pharisees. But he's going to teach the people about the Pharisees. In a not even a roundabout way. He's just going to teach them, but they're standing there, saying, "The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat." What is that? Uh, I mean, we're chapter and verse. Would you ever see Moses' seat? Well, they made something up. So who is their God? Moses. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe. Do what they tell you to do. Imagine God telling you to, do, to obey the religionists. That observe and do. But do not after their works. For they say and do not. Now there's a difference. You're to, they're in authority. You are to obey their authority except when it goes against God. Wash your hands. We already dealt with it. There's nothing wrong with washing hands before having a meal. But you're not going to go to hell because you didn't wash your hands. And, okay, verse 4. I got a note coming up here that I don't want to miss. For they bind heavy burdens. Now, let's go over 11.28, I think it is. And with these two verses, you're going to see what Jesus was talking about. 11.28. And this is great when you've got somebody who's in a religion or in a cult. Come unto me, all ye that are labor. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now come back over here, he's going to tell you what he just said. He's talking about the traditions and the rules of the Pharisees. They've got them under a strain. You know, you got to have a calendar, a stopwatch, and a sundial, and the rules to know what you can do, what you can't do. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born, and lay them on men's shoulders. That's where the staves were supposed to go when they carried the ark, the ark of the covenant, the mercy. I mean, the uh, the. the Altar incense, the table. Remember those staves? They were to carry them. But they themselves will not move them with one of their things. They tell you what to do, but they won't do them themselves. How's that? That's a hypocrite. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. We've seen that with the prayer, the fasting, and giving. They make broad their phylacteries. That's this little box they got. On a, they tied to their head or heart. Enlarge the borders of their garments. Now you remember it said in the law they would have a blue lace around their hem. But they got a bigger blue lace than, lace than everybody else does. See, it's like when you go in a crowd of people, a Baptist preacher, you're not going to notice. But if you got a Roman Catholic priest, how are you going to know him? The little collar. You know that little collar tells you, look who I am. I'm somebody important. That's why they do it. To make, you know, you know who I am. And love the uppermost rooms at feast. That's the big seats. 
and chief seats in the synagogues. Well, look at that. They want to show. And greetings in the market. Hi, Father. Hi, Rabbi. Hi, Reverend. And to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. That's Jewish. We're going to learn something here in a minute. Be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master. Remember all the times they called Jesus master? All they were doing was calling him rabbi. They were called rabbis. So Jesus was nothing more important than what they were, as far as title. One is your master, even Christ. I'm, Christ said, listen, I'm the master. You just don't believe it. And all ye are brethren. You're all Jews. Why are you raising yourself up on a pedestal? Why are you giving, you know, PhD, DOD, reverend, and all that? Why are you doing that? All right, that's Jewish. Call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father which is in heaven. Gentile. That's a Gentile religious title. Given to men. And some don't even have children. If that's not a ha 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 ha. So we see a Gentile. And we see a Jewish religious title. And Jesus says knock it off. And all those tiles, look at me. Neither be ye called masters. For one is your master, even Christ. Secret organizations. The master poopa. The master clansmen. The master whatever. You got Jewish, you got Gentile, and you got secret identities. The titles that Jesus says don't do. How's that? In three verses. Jesus again says, I'm the master. They called him master, but they didn't believe it. But he that is greatest among you, if you're going to be so great, shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself, Look at me. See my collar? See a degree on the wall? I'm a PhD. Shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. There are people who do that in the radio, TV, and pulpits of Baptist churches and churches all, all over. You know? I'm the pastor of this church. And then they'll quote that verse out of the song. You know, uh, what is it? Uh, Touch not God's anointed, do his prophet. That ain't for you. All right. Now, what would Jesus do? But he's still talking. But woe unto you, condemnation, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Ooh, Jesus. Ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Peter stands at the gate. You got to go through Peter to get to heaven. If you don't say enough prayers and don't give us enough money, we can't let you out of purgatory into heaven. If you don't kill enough, shed enough blood, we can't let you into paradise. If you don't sell enough magazines, you won't get to go in the millennium and be of the 144. For ye neither go in yourselves. Look at it. Look what he just said. The Pharisees describe you're not going into the millennium. You're not going to get that land. Neither suffer allow ye them that are entering to go in. So he's saying you're going to hell. You're not going into the kingdom if you're a Jew. Where are you going? Jesus would never preach hell. He just did. Lazarus went where? 
Abraham's bosom. Where did the rich man go? <gasps> so these guys ain't going to the kingdom. They're going to hell. He's not done. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites. Remember, he's talking to the people, but they're standing there. He's giving the people, he's saying, listen, you see these guys over here? He's probably, probably got his hand. These guys here? You see these guys? Let me tell you something about them. You think this is love? You better believe it's love because he's telling the people to beware of these deceivers. They're not going to lead you into heaven because they ain't going there themselves. We are to follow Jesus' example, are we not? Expose the deceivers. For ye devour widows' houses. And this is a Catholic. I don't know about other religions. Husband died. If you give us money, if you go up and burn candles for a dollar. That's exactly what they do. For a pretense make long prayer. That's a false offer. You pay us and we can pray for that soul out of uh, uh, purgatory. I grew up in that mess. I've got their books. And they will not even deny that fact. Sometimes they say purgatory is closed, so I don't know. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. So you just saw the Roman Catholic Church 33 AD. Long before any pope. Long before, uh, I can't think of his name now. Constantine. The Roman Catholic Church was being practiced by the Pharisees who Jesus is rebuking. Call no man your father. Who makes prayers for widows for their dead people. We ain't done. By the way, they're going to get the greater damnation. There are different degrees in hell. I don't know how that's possible. I mean, just to think about going to hell is a damnation enough, but you're going to burn even more? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. I like that. Ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, that is a new convert. And when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourself. Now, you want to follow that verse? You pick up Christopher Columbus, 1492, when he sailed the ocean blue, and you follow the Roman Catholic Church coming into Native America and killing Native Americans for gold, silver, trinkets, and all that, and then, you know, making them Catholic by the point of a sword. If you don't receive this, this bread and wine, we're going to kill you. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs about that. We're going to burn you on a faggot if you don't denounce Jesus Christ and receive our Jesus Christ. And when it says when they go out and they get a convert and they train him in all the ways they're out, they make him twofold worse. So if they're going to receive the greater damnation, verse 14, what about this convert? He's going to receive the greatest damnation. One, two, blind guides. Ooh, we change, we change subject. Blind guides. Which say, whosoever shall swear by the temple, O holy building, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he's a debtor. O holy building, well, that's nothing. Oh, that gold is on the. Oh, gold, you see. So, what were they reverencing that more? The building of God or the gold of God? The gold. They were valuing the money. So you got today, you got all kinds of churches that are multi-billion dollar churches. It's all about the money, not about the building. Ye fools and blind. I don't know. 
even fools and blind. For whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, the brazen altar. See, it's all there in Roman time. It's going to be there in the tribulation. It's going to be there in the millennium. They walk up to the altar and they swear by the altar. It is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift, that would have been an animal. What was one of the animals they would bring to the altar? A holy cow? Did I get that right? Dress up as a cow and you get a free meal? That's upon it. He is guilty. So what they're saying is, the gold is more important than the service of God. That sacrifice that would become the priest, he can eat it, he can sell it. That's more important than the altar. Do you understand it? And do you understand what when when you read Malachi, they snuff at the, the, the you know. Read that back with Malachi and figure out how what the priest's attitude was. Uh, doing it over again. Ooh, that's a nice cow. I can get some good money on that, or I can feed my family. And meanwhile, the altar probably hasn't hasn't been clean, hasn't been polished. This was back in the times of Eli's sons. The the offering wasn't ready yet. I want that piece. Well, sir, it ain't ready. You take the fork and you grab it. I don't care. I want it. 18. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon the altar, me, he is guilty. Really? Where would you find that in the law? Matter of fact, the law says don't swear at all. Ye fools and blind. For whether is greater the gift or the altar that sacrifices the gift. Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. Forks, tongues, great. Whosoever shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein, the priest, God. A swear is a swear, no matter what you have done. And he that shall swear by heaven, my heavens. Swear by the throne of God. Be careful what you say with your mouth. Every idle word shall be judged. Matthew 11. And by him that sitteth thereon. So when you say something to the glory of heavens. You are swearing by God's throne and by God himself. Be careful what you swear. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and amice. No. Nope. Oh. And cunum. They're paying tithe of the little things, little spices. Not much. Very, very, very minute. And have omitted the weighter matters of the law. Judgment, mercy, and faith. They completely eliminated that. Wait a minute. Is that, is that 20 leaves of mint I see? You owe me two leaves. Sir, this guy, he defrauded me. He owes me money. I'm not going to. Where's your offering? Oh, sir, please forgive me. I, I, I don't have enough to give you guys for the offering. You bring it down there. You go buy it right down there in the temple. And you come back with that exact offering. And there's no faith. We've seen that. These, judgment, mercy, faith, ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. God just, said, God just said, judgment, mercy, and faith is much better than tithing. 
You know, you can tithe to God, and God said, you know what? Unless you show proper judgment and mercy to others and faith, some people give to the church without faith in God. Oh, I'll claim it on my 1040. Ye blind guides which strain at a gnat, a little tiny, you know, little, little bugs that just drive you up the wall, you know, and swallow a can camel. Again, it's a little tiny things that we get, we you know, and you got this big problem in front of you, and they're not even acknowledging it little tiny rules and regulations and you know what the big problem is here God is not happy with them they're gonna go to hell God is not pleased they're going to kill the Messiah that's a big problem wouldn't you think woe unto you scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites don't you just love Jesus for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter but within they are full of extortion and excess. Now that right there is saying your body's clean on the outside. You look religious, but inside you, you are filthy. What people can't see, but what, you know, this is Jesus speaking. What I can see inside you, you're filthy. You've got these people full. That's what he's telling them. The blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. The aim is just at the Pharisees. You better get your inside right. They're full of envy, Pilate says. That's Pilate's testimony. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, dead man's buildings, which indeed appear beautiful outward, and they are, but are within full of dead man's bones and of all uncleanness. You look pretty outside, but inside you're dead. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. You look right. Remember, he's preaching to the disciples. He's preaching to the multitude. You guys look good on the outside. You got the right guard. You got the perfume. You got the oil. But within ye are full of hypocr hypocrisy and iniquity. They're not clean. They're not washed. They're not right with God. They are filthy. But they look good. That's religion. That's how God sees religion. So next time you see a priest, just look on the other side. Hey, yeah, you look good. It's clean and all that. But man, inside you're filthy. And the Bible says you're going to get the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites. He's not laying up, is he? Because ye build the tombs of the prophets. Oh, let's see this prophet here? Let's build him a nice tomb, shall we? And garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. Oh, we got. Let's make a building plan for the dead. And say, if we have been in the days of our fathers history time machine we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophet see we're going to decorate their graves but our fathers killed them wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophet you know your works about dressing up that graveyard you're just witnessing to the fact is you're trying to kill your conscience with 
good works. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents. Ooh, ye generation of vipers. Ow. How can ye escape the damned nation Jesus never preached hell? You know somebody come up to you and tell you Jesus never preached hell? That goes to church? This message is probably being preached to that guy's preacher priest or whoever why would he bring that out out of his pulpit if that's what God's speaking to they call it soul sleep they call it uh, uh, paradise they call it uh, all kinds of names but they don't call it hell they're trying to disguise the place they're going build little monuments of death and hell make it prettier wherefore behold I send unto you prophets people are going to tell you what's going to happen I'm a prophet I stand in the street corner and tell you if you die without Jesus Christ you're going to hell I'm a prophet and wise men I don't know how wise I am but I know what God's told me and scribes and some of them ye sh okay some of them sh some of them ye shall that's not past tense he is prophesying to these Pharisees guess what I'm gonna send you a bunch of men he's talking to some of them right now the 11 disciples Judas will die and others and the Roman Catholic Church, Fox's Book of Martyrs. And you know what you're going to do to them? You shall, you shall kill them. What you're reading now is the Book of Acts. And it begins with Stephen. Who they really, literally chewed out the preacher. And crucified. Peter was, we know, was crucified upside down. Peter's standing there and he's hearing this message. And a little later, Jesus is going to tell him, Peter, on your deathbed, you're not going to be able to get about. They're going to carry you and they're going to do the same thing they've done to me. And some of them shall ye scourge. Scourge. That's whip. That's Paul. This 34 is the book of Acts. And church history yet it's not church history he is warning the Pharisees and the scribes this is what you're going to do and they do it in your synagogues again book of Acts look where they done it and persecute them from city to city book of Acts how's that for a prophecy it's not the first advent of Jesus Christ it's after the death burial resurrection of Jesus Christ and it's been fulfilled take the entire book of Acts and just paste it right there with that verse if you can or take this verse here and make multiple copies and paste it on the on the top of every page in the book of Acts And the disciples don't even have a clue yet. Then upon you, excuse me, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. Now isn't that a charge? From the blood of righteous Abel. Cain did that. They didn't do it. Unto the blood of Zacharias. Now this is I'm having a problem. My eyes are cloudy, so forgive me. This is Second Chronicles 24, 20 to 22. In the Jewish scriptures, their last book is not Malachi. 
their last book is Second Chronicles. So from Abel to Zacharias is from Genesis, the first book, to the last book, Second Chronicles. And Jesus said, I'm going to hold you to the death of every righteous prophet that's ever happened. That's the charge given to Satan, John 8, 44. Now let's go read John 8, 44 real quick. Keep your place here. Let's see what he says to these men. Because he says something quite interesting. Call no man your father. John 8, 44. And he's talking to the, the Pharisees, the scribes. He said, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. They're lusting. Eli's sons lusted. He was a murderer from the beginning, Cain, if not Adam and Eve, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. There's no truth in these guys. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and a father of it. Well, when these guys are teaching their, their religion, isn't that a big lie? Aren't they father of those lies of Satan? He's addressing these guys in verse 35 through Satan. From Abel to the blood of Zacharias, the son of Barcaius, whom he, whom ye, ye, Pharisees, in your heart you slew these men. You read the history. You read the, the, the scripture. And you read and said, oh man, I would have killed that guy for saying that. How dare you say that to my father? How dare you speak to the people like that? And they're charged with murder. Whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. It's from Genesis to Second Chronicles, the entire Old Testament. That's a big charge. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Book of Acts. Definitely. This generation, these people that he's presently talking to would be the book of Acts. So when you read about our brothers and sisters in Christ in the book of Acts and all the torment and torture and death they got, Jesus said those people that did it, ooh, they're in for hellfire. Old Jerusalem, now he's now he's turned to the multitudes again. Old Jerusalem, Jerusalem. That's where he is, where he's gonna die. Outside the gate. Thou that killest the prophets, the Jewish people, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. Go back and read the Old Testament. How often would I have gathered thy children together? Well, if he's talking about the Old Testament prophets, then he's speaking, I, I, Jesus Christ, as God of the Old Testament, I would, I sent those prophets because I love you. I sent Jeremiah not to get you mad, but that you didn't go to Babylon, that you get right. I sent you Ezekiel in Babylon because I wanted you to, to get right and do right. Had you done that, I would have taken you and gathered you even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings. I assume that's protection. When she gathers her chickens together, there may be a fox. And look what he says a free will, and ye would not. God, Jesus Christ, wanted that nation to come together and get right. And ye would not. Why did they go to Babylon? Ye would not. Why is Titus going to come in 70 AD and destroy them? Ye would not. 
Why are the Gentiles going to come into the gospel? You would not. Behold, your house. He just said over here. Oh, where is it? He said, shall I call my house a house of prayer, but you made it dens of thieves. Now he says, your house. That's your building. I'm gone. I'm left out. Is left unto you desolate, and that's to 2016. 70 AD, they come in and they destroy it again, just like Babylon did. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, Jesus Christ, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Psalm 118 22. When they say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, that's Jesus Christ, the second advent. Man, they have been through seven years of hell. <laughs> they have been chased and tortured and killed and, and everything by the Antichrist with extreme hatred. And they're going to want and be happy when their Messiah comes to relieve them. This is a hard chapter. <laughs> 